Hello everyone. Now in this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to run through Turbomol's Define program so you can use this to set up future calculations. The very first thing we have to do is log in. You see I have the on-demand page open right here. And for, se for this session, we're just going to use the raw Markov shell. And so we go to the clusters and click the Markov shell access and then I am logged in and ready to go. Before we do any work with TurboMole, the first thing we always have to do is module load. And so the way this works is module load TurboMole slash serial. This is to specify that we're using the serial version of the code. Uh, and hopefully, so you hit enter, and then hopefully you don't see anything after that, and that means that it works. You can verify by typing which DSCF, for instance, and it should give you some location like this that ends in DSCF. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is navigate to some directory that has some that's going to hold the research we want to do. So you see I, I have a folder of molecules. I'm going to try water2 over here. And now what I'm going to do is to start, we always want to start with a geometry file. All right, so I'm going to take this geometry structure, water.xyz, that I've made previously, and I'm going to copy it into my current folder. So now my current folder just has this water.xyz. So before we start using anything inside of TurboMole, we need to convert this file into a format so that TurboMole can understand. And we do that using this internal tool called X2T. So X2T stands for transforming an XYZ file into a TurboMole file. We give it the name of the file that we want to convert. And then if we just hit enter on this, then it will spit back the file to, straight to the command prompt. Uh, but that doesn't really help us much. What we want to do is turn that into a file. And so we do that by running the command, press up to get back to the original command, press the right caret so you get something that looks like a greater than, and then we're going to do what's called redirect into the file name chord. And so what this does is it takes the output of the previous command and turns it into a new file called chord. Okay, so we do that, and now we have this, we have water.xyz in this file chord. And now we're ready to run the program define. Okay, so define is the special program in Terminal that helps you prepare to run other calculations. So it's an interactive program that uh, is pretty much the first step before you do just about any Terminal calculation. It turns out that unless you're doing truly humongous calculations, and I mean like hundreds and hundreds of atoms, then define doesn't do any demanding calculations while you're running it. And so this is normally fine to do on the head node. But if you're ever in doubt, then there's no harm in getting a compute node and then running all of this over again. So for now, we're just going to do this straight on the head node. Okay, so to run this, what we do is we just type define, D-E-F-I-N-E, -E, hit enter. And so now you see this nice text-based interactive interface that comes up. Um, and we're going to go through this step by step. So there's some, some useful information up at the top, so the name of the program, the name that, uh, you know, TurboMole, and also the version number that you're using. Uh, it tells you where it found some of the basic libraries and things like that that it wants to use, and besides that, you're good to go. So the first thing you do in the first option is you always just hit return. Don't ever mess with that, there's no reason to. Uh, second, you can input an optional title for your calculation. So to be honest, I normally skip this, but for now, let's just give ourselves a name like water optimization. Okay, so now we're in the geometry menu. So there are a lot of different options that you see here in the geometry menu, uh, but we're only going to pay attention to the ones that we need the most right now. And so the first one that you'll use the most is the add coordinates one, right? So this is, so we do A stands for add coordinates, and then we give it the name of the chord file that we made before. So A chord, hit enter. What this is going to do is read through the contents of that chord file we just made, 
and you notice that it has, it says that it found three atoms successfully and they have been added. And so now this specification down here says number of atoms equals three. Okay, so now the next thing we're gonna do is use this command called desi, D-E-S-Y, and just give it a default parameter. So just hit desi and hit enter. And what this does is it automatically searches for a symmetry that your molecule might have. All right, so in this case, it's water. We know that water is C2V, and so it found a C2V symmetry. Uh, honestly, there's no real harm in ever doing this, except for rare circumstances when you really don't want it to. And so you might as well just hit, hit Desi now and then, and it will automatically find the symmetry, or it won't, and then everything will be fine. Or it'll you know, fall back to C1 symmetry, and everything is fine. And then the last thing you'll normally need to do before you run any sort of geometry optimizations is to generate uh, internal coordinates, which is just a simplified way to think of or to incorporate things like bonding structure while you're running the calculation. And the best way to do this in triple mole is just to run I, I red. So I R E D, hit enter. It has a bunch of output, but as long as it doesn't say, you know, catastrophic failure or anything like that, then you're good to go. And now we're done with the geometry menu, and so we exit this by typing star and hitting enter. Okay, so now it says it's writing to chord, and we go into the next menu, and the next menu is the basis menu, or the basis set menu. Uh, so we won't talk about basis sets for some time still in the class, and so for now, I'm just going to tell you to use this really common basis set called DEF2SVP, and we do this by running B, which stands for assign the basis set, all, which means to all atoms, and then def2 dash capital SVP, hit enter. Uh, and as long as it doesn't say error, you're good to go. And then we'll just move on and we'll come back to this when we eventually talk about basis sets in, de in greater detail. All right, so next we're in the initial guess section. So what we're trying to do is to solve for the electronic wave function and to get started we need some initial guess for this electronic wave function um, and so this is how we decide what to do so again this is one of these things that we'll talk a lot about in greater detail later on but I'll say for like 98 percent of cases you ever come across in Turbomol the best thing to do is this what's called this uh, extended Huckel guess and so you, to do this you just type EHT hit enter Okay, so now it asks if you want to use the default parameters for the extended Huckel calculation down here, and just always say yes. I've never heard of a single situation where it makes sense to change that. Um, so now you would enter the molecular charge. In our case, we have a neutral molecule, so we could just hit enter, but we'll do zero enter just for kicks. And then it pops back with this suggested occupation that you might want to use. Right, and so what this is saying is basically that uh, you have this is giving you guess for molecular orbitals with particular energies, and these four are all doubly, doubly occupied, and then starting down here, they're singly occupied. Um, again, for like most organic molecules and pretty simple things, this will do a good job, and you can just hit enter. And for right now, uh, this is this is actually pretty perfect for us. So we just we don't worry about it too much. We hit enter and we move on. Okay, so now it's going to do a little bit of work behind the scenes to try to figure out what the initial guess actually is. And now we finally come to the final menu, which is the method menu. All right, and now this is, this is the bulk of the class, right? right? So what methods do you use when? So we're not going to talk about that right now. For now, I'm just going to show you how to set up a density functional theory calculation. Right, so you have all of these different options, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you about some of them, so this SCF helps you set the parameters you will use either to run density functional theory calculations or Hartree-Fock calculations. There's, uh, there's menus for molar plus at perturbation theory, for couple cluster, uh, for different ways to compute properties like dipole moments or, um, or localized orbitals, uh, different ways to compute things like the forces, force constants or forces on a molecule. Right, so there's just there's all these things that we will eventually talk about at some point, but um, just be aware that, that this is where they sit, but we're not going to use them just yet. Okay, so now to set this up for density functional theory, we just type DFT, which goes for this, this set right here, hit enter. So the first thing you need to do is to turn it on, so you just type on, 
and now you say DFT is used, and it's using this default functional. This one's fine, but we're going to change it out to one that I like a little better. So to do this, you do func, so F-U-N-C, and then use T-P-S-S. -S. And again, density functionals is an enormous topic that we're not going to talk about anytime soon. Okay, and then when you're done with this, you just hit enter again. Okay, so now another thing, this is, this is just standard practice. Uh, the next thing we want to do is to set up the use of the resolution of the identity, which is a really valuable approximation technique that speeds up the calculation, sometimes by up to a factor of 10, with practically no loss in the accuracy. So there's basically no downside to ever using it. And so just we're gonna we're gonna make this part of the habit. Okay, so first we're gonna do RI. This gives us this RI menu that's down here. And it's kind of a similar menu as before. We type on. This turns RI on. And that's all we need to do. All the other defaults are fine. So then we just hit enter. Okay, and a similar situation for resolution of identity is this other option that's called Mari J, M I M A R I J, which stands for, I think, multiple accelerated resolution of the identity. Uh, and you can kind of think of it as a supercharged resolution of the identity, and this is even more true, right? So it can it can greatly speed up large calculations at zero cost in terms of the actual accuracy, and so there's no reason to never set or to, to, so you should always set it basically. So you do you know, Mari J, it opens this thing. That's actually all you need to do. Just hit enter, and then it will do everything else for you. Okay, and then the final thing that we're going to do as a standard course is to turn on these things called dispersion corrections. So to do this, to get to this menu, you go to DSP, kind of short for dispersion. Okay, and dispersion corrections are these really cheap, uh, somewhat empirical corrections to standard density functional theory that tries to incorporate things like van der Waals interactions and long range interactions. But the thing is, is that they uniformly improve the quality of the results at virtually zero computational cost. So it's a bit of a no-brainer to just always use them. Uh, so the variant we're going to use is this thing called DFT D3BJ, which is this, this line here. And so the option for that is just BJ, enter, and then it's set, and we hit enter again, and we're good. Uh, and then that, that's about it, actually. So everything else that we could possibly set, all of the default electronic parameters and things like uh, energy thresholds. The defaults for all of these are fine for now, and so we're going to leave that. And so now to, to finish, we just hit star, enter, and we're done, right? So now we've run define, uh, and we're basically ready to go for the next calculations. But before we close, I want to show you what define actually did. Uh, so one thing to notice is that, right, so even though We've been going through this for nine minutes. Define only spent about 0.13 seconds of that time actually working hard. This is part of why I said it's okay to do this interactively on a head node, is because you know, despite nine minutes of of me sitting here staring at the screen, it only had to do actually you know a tenth of a second worth of work, and so that's that's kind of fine. Um, okay, so now if we hit ls, we list all of the files in this directory. You notice we have a whole bunch of new ones, right? We started off with cord and water.xyz, and now we have new ones that are called control, mo's, basis, and aux basis. So we're going to go through, through these just briefly, a little bit in order. So the most important one is this thing called the control file. Okay, so the contents of the control file, it's, it's just a big text file. It looks really kind of crazy and, and wild. But in short, it is a list of all of the parameters that we set, including some that we didn't set, that got set by default, uh, running define. And so every single thing that will define future calculations in some way needs to go inside of the chord file. And so normally we will set all of this stuff automatically using define, but you can also go through and manually change things when you need to here and there. So one one example I'll show you is that, for like for example, we set the density functional using define. And now if we find this DFT block, right? And so this DFT block, just like all blocks, starts with dollar sign and then the name of the block. 
And now under here, it tells you that we're using functional TPSS, and we're using this grid size M3. Uh, so the grids are a, a special feature of density functional theory we'll talk about it later, but the default is okay for this. So we're gonna run with that. Um, but we also have this dispersion B3, which is we set. We have RIJ, we have all these other, you know, MariJ, all these other things that we set that are already in the control file. Uh, and so if we didn't feel like going back through define to just change the density functional, we can just change this line here and it would, it would work the next time we ran it. Um, the other thing I want to show you is that control file, or sorry, the coord file got updated, right? So previously it just had these coordinates here and that's it. And now it has these definitions of redundant internal coordinates. Okay, and then there is the, the basis file, which includes the text-based information for all of the basis that were all the basis functions we're going to use. Uh, we'll learn a lot more about this later in the course, but just want you to know that it's here and you can always go and inspect it. And it's similar for this aux basis, except this is all of the information used for the resolution of the identity and not for the normal basis. And then finally, there's this MOs, and the MOs file includes all of the information you need to specify the molecular orbitals. So right now, we haven't done an actual calculation, right? We've just done the setup. And so these molecular orbitals are just initial guesses that only specify the bare minimum. And so this file will change a lot the first time that you actually run a calculation. But this always has to be here and this always has this sort of a form. Uh, okay, so that is how to run define and that is all of the basic information that it spits back out at you. At this point, you would be totally ready to go on and do your next step, be it a single point or geometry optimization or excited state calculations or whatever. Right, so you always start with define, and once you've done this, you're ready to go.